One of the most amazing observations we have made over the last couple of years is the following. Many candidates, as soon as they get a chart or a data table, fall victim to what you can call spontaneous amnesia. Um, so this means they immediately forget everything that has been discussed leading up to this chart. So instead, they just tend to stare at the chart, drowning in the information and trying to distill insights just by looking at all the information on the chart, right? But they don't contextualize the chart. This means they don't relate the information on the chart back to the core question, the criterion to answer this core question or to the last insight generated before the chart was even given out by the interviewer. So there's a pretty simple trick. As soon as you receive a chart or data, your immediate mental reaction should be, wait, what did we just discuss that led the interviewer to give me this data now? This is often sufficient to point you to the central insight of the chart. So you must be guided by the logic that you yourself set up at the beginning of the case, right? Which allows you to answer the core question. And the chart and information that is given to you should just work as yeah, the source of data to perform the required corresponding analysis. But do not be guided by the chart itself, because very often, not all the information on the graph you get is even insightful or important. Parts of the information in the charts are crucial, but others just create noise and distract you. Right? So taking your logic as the guiding star will allow you to quickly identify which pieces of information are crucial to generate the required insights to proceed towards an answer to the client's question. So let's quickly look at two examples for this. So example number one, um, let's assume we have a client, uh, it's a private equity fund, right? And they look at a potential uh, target company. Right? Uh, the buying price would be uh, 500 million euros. Right? And their goal, I mean, as for every good private equity fund, their goal is to make money, right? Uh, uh, and for this, they have a minimum uh, requirement of 50% return on investment over five years. So, Let's assume we receive this chart. Now, um, a poor way to deal with this chart would be to only concentrate on observations, right? So looking at this chart and then saying, um, yeah, all right, we can see in this chart that uh, um, the company value is related to uh, the annual EBIT, right? So uh, essentially for every increase of EBIT by 20 million, company value increases by around 120 million, right? This is not an insight. This is just an observation, right? But it is not contextualized. It is essentially just reading out what you can see here, but you're not relating it to the context of the case. So what do I mean with contextualizing the chart, right? Um, so what we have seen is that the client's goal is to generate a return on investment of at least 50%, right? And we know that uh, the buying price was 500 million. So this means a return on investment of 50% is generated if uh, we can resell this company in the future for at least 750 million euros, right? That would generate 50% return on the 500 million that we pay in the first place. So. This means that 750 million in, in, in company value for the target is roughly here, right? So, and this in turn means that 
if the client believes that he can bring the target company to an annual EBIT of at least yeah around 125 uh, million euros right then this will be a good deal because these 125 million in EBIT would warrant a 750 million valuation for the target company this is an insight because this relates clearly to what the client has asked and what we need to find out in order to clearly answer that question. So let's look at another example. Um, again, let's assume we have a client, right? They are a producer of ancillary computer devices like printers, scanners, uh, webcams, mouses, all of that stuff, right? So um, let's assume they want to know whether they should introduce an ink refill subscription model, right? So that users of their printers can essentially subscribe uh, to ink refills so that the, the printers automatically scan um, uh, the cartridges, right? And if the cartridge is more or less empty, right, then um, an automatic message would be sent um, uh, to the provider and then they get uh, essentially new cartridges. Um, and they want to introduce this for their newer printer models, right? Uh, models that are um, yeah, younger than, uh, than four years or not older than four years, right? The goal is increasing profits. So let's again assume we get handed a chart, right? This chart here. So again, a pretty poor way to deal with this would now be to just again, look at the data, drown in this data and just describe what you see, right? So saying things like, uh, all right, um, we see that uh, there has been flat growth between 2014 and 2020, right? So no substantial growth. Um, we also see that there's been a bit of fluctuation, especially in the year 2016, where we saw a steep drop, right? Which, would, uh, which was then uh, quickly recovered in the following, right? Um, what we also see is there's uh, um, a substantial increase in the share of printer sales, right? Uh, relative to the total sales, right? Um, and uh, what we can also see maybe is that uh, the sales of the, the other devices, right? That are not printers or scanners, seem to be pretty stable and also even unaffected by this dip that we saw in 2016. All of this is true, right? But it's still pretty poor because again, these are just observations. There's no contextualization, right? It's not related to what the client has asked and what we want to find out. So in contrast to that, what we can do again is um, we can say, all right, so we see that over the last four years, we have sold a bit more than 3 million printers, right? Um, and this is essentially our current potential subscriber base. Because as we saw, uh, we are looking at subscriptions for users of printers that are not older than four years, right? So now the next logical step here would be to derive a realistic penetration rate, right? So how many of these 3.2 million uh, printer users would essentially uh, be prone to, uh, yeah, to subscribe to such a model, right? And together with uh, pricing information or a pricing model, we could use this in order to estimate a revenue that we could realistically expect. Now, this is an insight, right? And again, the insight is generated by contextualizing the, uh, uh, the information on the chart and uh, the observations that you make, right? So that is what is meant by generating insights by contextualizing data.